I'm Ernie Foster, uh, uh, native here in Hatteras Village, and I operate the Albatross Fleet Charter Boats. And I'm his wife, Lynn. <laughs> I do the fun stuff, the computer work and the paying the bills part. <laughs> we were watching a pretty serious erosion on the sound side on that island at Durant's Point and realized that if something didn't happen, it would it really affect the access to the harbor. And this is the key fishing center on Hatteras Island, both charter and commercial. The standard solutions to coastal erosion, bulkheads, seawalls, or riprap, also means losing their natural coastline. The Fosters thought there must be another way to protect their coastline from erosion and keep the natural heritage that makes this place Hatteras. Well, during the development boom some years ago now, um, marshes got filled in. I mean, they're not necessarily legally, but they got filled in. Uh, bulkheads were built everywhere. So the grassy areas along the edges of the sounds were lost. And um, Hatteras ended up having the only really true marsh left. Durlitz Point was a place that as a kid, I, uh, I used to wander around in a small skiff up through a creek that runs up there. And uh, as a teenager, I got on that marsh and, and hunt, not with much success, but I just liked being out there. And you just, I didn't want to see it go away. While serving on the board of the North Carolina Coastal Federation, a local nonprofit, Ernie Foster learned about living shorelines. I had read about them and had talked with, with some folks a little bit. And the idea of doing something that not only would protect the harbor from a very pragmatic, practical standpoint, but to be able to do that in such a way that you were also creating a better habitat for all the little creatures. It's just a win-win for everybody. Even though living shoreline seemed like a good idea, Ernie had an uphill battle. A lot of people are not comfortable with doing something different. Ernie was very instrumental in bringing about the community sport support for the project. He was very instrumental in communicating the value of the project with other uh, people within the community as well as bringing it to the attention of the county commissioners. I asked the Fosters about these conversations. We talked to these people one on one about the marsh. We said, what do you think about Durant's Point? Are you proud of it? Do you love it? Is mm -hmm. it valuable to you? They, everybody, of course, said, oh yeah, I didn't, never really thought about it, but yes, that's where I take my sons to teach them to shoot, or that's where we mm -hmm. kayak. And um, then you can go into, well, what do you think would happen if it all just washed away? Oh my gosh, no, that'd be a tragedy. There, you've got your input. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. The Fosters also had to get the county commissioners on board. Alan Burris is the vice chairman of the Dare County Board of Commissioners. I went in it with my mind thinking that it would be a dredge project somewhere or another that maybe we could work something out with the environmental groups that were in the area. We spent a lot of time with the Coastal Federation and some time with uh, some others. And the bottom line is we they showed us this other shoreline that they were using inland in North Carolina around the Plymouth area that looked very good. So we were able to take that and apply it here. And the more we looked at it, the more we liked it. So were there any surprises along yeah, the way? Yeah, certainly was. It worked. It worked. <laughs> we, we had a lot of doubts about it working. Yeah. And that's exactly where we were in that situation. We had a lot of doubts about it. And so it's real interesting that uh, uh, it's worked as well as it did. The decision makers we met in Hatteras were innovators. By doing something different, they were able to solve the problem of coastal erosion without losing the natural heritage that makes Hatteras home.